Here's some examples of separable equations to supplement what's in the book but you definitely need to look at the book if you weren't in lecture as well. Um, I'll start with a version of the most important differential equation of all, which is mystery function is a multiple of itself. And I'll just choose three because I did in class. And uh, if you refer back to an earlier video, we actually figured out the solution to this already. Um, and that was y of t. I'm going to use dy. I'm going to use t for the independent variable. Um, it's e to the 3t, because when you take the derivative of that, it's itself times a 3 factor with a chain rule. And in fact, any multiple of that works. Okay. And if you're not convinced, check it. Just take the derivative and, and see that it's 3 times the, what you started with. So. Uh, if you look at this, the graph of that, it's the exponential function with the e to the 3t, or twice that, or half that, or minus that, or minus 2 that, or a very special and important case, y equals 0, because that's what happens when c equals 0. That's an equilibrium solution. That's something we know is important. So I want to show you a way to get this without guessing. And unfortunately, it's got one thing about it. It's some, some about it is fairly straightforward. But it's got one thing that's pretty annoying and finicky, but I have to show it to you because it comes up a lot in these in these examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this with the dy and the dt notation. And this is a step here that's a bit sketchy in terms of proving. And a lot of people get nervous here, understandably so. A lot of the time we, we think about dy and dt as not really having their own separate existence. But one of the places where it totally makes sense to, to work with those if we, is if we integrate. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate these out. So this only mentions y and this only mentions t. And then this is exactly the kind of thing that we're able to integrate. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we're able to integrate does turn out that this is legal. You can justify it very carefully if you look at the chain rule and substitution rules and all that kind of stuff. But it's really not that uh, enlightening to see the proof at this point. Now, I want to mention one thing that really is a dicey step here, and that is I divided by y here. Can we do that? Well, only if we assume y is not equal to 0. But wait a minute. We know secretly that y equals 0 is a solution to this equation. Uh-oh. OK. Well, all we have to do is do y equals 0 separately. That's one of the annoying finicky things here. And that's actually a very common thing with separable equations. We're going to do this kind of algebra quite a bit, where we separate out the y's, separate out the t's, and we often are going to have to divide by a variable in order to do that. And we're going to have to actually just do some special cases. That's annoying, but that's life. Now, integral of 3 dt, let's do that one first. The dt here is telling us it's going to be 3t plus a constant. That's one of the uses of having the dt here. It tells us what the variable is to put here. It's not 3x. It's not 3y. It's not 3z. It's 3t plus c. Here, think for a second. Pause the video if you want to, if you want to uh, get a little more thinking out of it. That's ln of absolute value of y. And um, so we've done the calculus part. This is a totally algebraic relationship between y and t, but we'd like to solve for y as a function of t if we can. We can't always do that. Sometimes we have to sort of settle for this. Uh, I might be able to show an example of that. We'll see. So then ln becomes an e over here. That's something you want to stop and think about. If that's something that's still uncomfortable for you, it is It is for a lot of people at this stage. But ln of something equals equals something over here. When you strip that off, it's designed, by definition, to become an e. Oh, and you know what? I should have de decorated something. Um, this is c, and it's a multiplicative c. This guy, I have no reason to believe that that's the same c. And in fact, it won't be. It will be related. But I'm going to decorate it with a little c1 here. OK. So. Uh, here's where one of the things happens that it's that's really important to, to get a feel for. It doesn't happen in every example, but whenever you have like LNs and Es, it, it's going to happen. I want to relate that C1, as I was just saying, to the C here. That's a multiplicative C in front of e to the 3t. Here, it's an additive C in the exponent. But 
those are definitely going to be related because rules of exponents tells me I can split that up as a product. So that's another thing we want to be real familiar with here is rules of exponents. Okay, so now how do arbitrary constants work? C1 was just any number I could possibly pick, positive or negative or zero. And now what's coming out in front is e to the c1. That's e to any number. Well, let's look at the graph of e to the x. Okay, if I take a negative number, I get a small number. If I get zero, I get one. If I get, take a positive number, I get a big positive number. So that's all the possible values of e, c, e to the c1. Well, that's any number greater than zero. So I could just replace this with c2 or something just, and just say, okay, c2 is any arbitrary constant as long as it's greater than zero. But here is something that happens. When I strip off that absolute value, this says the size of y is this positive number, but I won't tell you what, whether it's positive or negative because it just tells you the size. Well, to strip that off, it just means let's put back the possibility that it could be negative. And now this is what I want to stare at here. This is e to the c1, which is known to be positive, but otherwise can be anything I want, and then times the plus or minus, which lets it be negative again. So the only thing this couldn't be is zero, but wait a minute, y equals zero did work. I just had to do it separately. And so this is unfortunately clunky. It's just an artifact of the solution procedure, which is a really useful solution procedure for a lot of equations. But in this kind of equation, what it's giving us is plus a positive number, minus a positive number, or zero, seemingly as special cases. But if I think about the thing that inf it's in front of the e to the 3t, can be either a positive arbitrary number or a negative arbitrary number or zero, well, you know what? I'm just going to say that's any number and I'm just going to call it c. So that's something that we have to watch out for. I, I hate spending a lot of time on this because really the ideas, the good ideas are up here where you separate it out and do integrals. And I'll show you another one that's not so finicky in a minute. But this does happen enough and it happens in the most important equation that I did have to mention there's this common process when you get ln absolute value y, that you get something that seems like it's building up to be a really complicated thing. Ooh, plus or minus e to the c1. What's that? Oh, you know what? It's just, it's just anything. Anything at all. So we do actually recover the solution we started with. Okay, uh, I'll do one more video on another example.